Can you believe it? We are almost at 10,000 subscribers. My small channel that I started almost almost exactly four years. Like this is kind of like my four year anniversary now, right now. That's insane to me. Like we're almost at 10,000. This is amazing. High five. Don't lie. You totally did it to the, to the screen, didn't you? <laughs> Can we just say Peter McKinnon and Mr. Beast who? <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Anyways, I want to thank you for all the support. If you aren't subscribed, I'd love to have you and help you become the best photographer that you can be. But today we're going to go over Lightroom Mobile, kind of an updated tips and tricks. So if you don't have a camera and you use your phone primarily, these tips and tricks will help you edit your photos even better. And so without further ado, let's get right into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're a returning subscriber, you know who I am. Welcome to the channel. If you are a first time viewer, my name is Will and I do these videos to help you become the best photographer you can be. So we're going to go over Lightroom mobile tips and tricks. And since we've already talked about it a lot, we're just going to get into it. Hopefully my phone doesn't stop recording because it does that sometimes. And then I have to redo everything and it drives me nuts. Anyways, now the first thing to understand about Lightroom Mobile is there's actually two versions. There's the free version and the paid version, just like almost every app out there. You download it on your phone and you have the free access to it, which gives you amazing editing tools. And then there's the paid version, which I believe is about $4.99 a month, but that gives you access to the selective tools, which is what's considered masking now, which is super great and super powerful for customizing your edits. It also gives you the ability to take photos, raw photos via the app. The paid version has this, the free version does not, but that's okay. I mean, if you just use the free version, it is a really good editing app, better than most of the phone one, default phone ones that come with the, with the phone. This gives you a lot more tools and allows you to customize your images. However, if you primarily use your phone, you don't have a camera and you primarily use your phone to take photos and edit photos, it probably will be beneficial to pay the $4.99 a month to get those extra features because you can really make your image is more dynamic and add a lot of uh, oomph to your Im images using the masking feature. So let's get into the actual app and go over some of these tips and tricks. So the first tips we're gonna go over are like pre-editing and then we're gonna get into the editing tips. Now, none of these tips are by order of importance, but there is one tip that you're definitely gonna to wanna to stay to the end because if you're familiar with Lightroom editing on the computer, you know that there is an intersect feature with the masking there isn't an intersect feature on the on Lightroom mobile, but there is a way to do it. So the first tip we're going to do is when you click all photos, you have all of your icons here, right? So if you take two fingers and you zoom out, you make the icon smaller. If you zoom in, you can make the icons bigger. So that is just a way to kind of customize how big or small you want the icon. It's a super simple tip, but it might help you stay organized a little bit better. All right, the next tip is mass selecting. So if you push and hold on an image and then it, it'll highlight with a check mark, mark, then you can go ahead and select all the images that you want in whatever order. And then let's say you wanna do something with them, delete them, share them, add them to a specific folder or create a new folder, etc. It allows you to organize a lot of photos and organize them a little bit easier. Uh, once you're done, just press done quick way to just select and adjust a lot of photos. Okay, the next tip is how to organize them by segments. So if you click the three dots in the top right and you go to segmentation, you're, you're able to organize the photos in this all photo folder by year, by month, by day, by hour, by a flag, by star rating, things like that. So let's say you wanna see all the photos that you starred one star, or two stars, or three stars, you wanna organize them by that. Simply click star rating and then go back to your photos and you'll notice, okay, so zero stars here, then you'll see on this right side, 1759, and then a little arrow. You click that arrow, it closes that menu. So you scroll up, there's one stars, there's two stars, close that one. There's three stars, there's four stars, there's five stars. So you can organize them by your stars. And that's a quick way to find certain photos that you want or to go through and handle all your one stars or handle all your two stars, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a fast way to organize so you can file everything properly. Okay, so the next one, which is kind of cool, is you can actually, Lightroom Mobile has a, a widget. Uh, this is for iPhones. So you can add it to your phone. So if you swipe out of this and let's go all the way to the right, you notice at the top, it says take photo. If I click that, it automatically opens this, the, the raw camera. So now I'm shooting raw. If you look down at the bottom left, HDR, Let's just do professional. 
boom, done. And then I can set my settings. I can adjust all of this however I want. And I can customize my image and all the settings and it's just really, really easy. So how did I do that? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna push and hold on the screen and then you're gonna go to the plus sign and it should be right at the top. You see it says Lightroom, Lightroom phone. Click this one and then you're going to press add widget and then just slide it, push and hold on it and then slide it where you want and I'm gonna put it right here. But see, I've already got it there so I don't really need it. So let's press done and then let's just go ahead and remove that one since I already have it. But that's the quickest way to just add that widget to your screen. It's pretty cool. And then you just swipe left, click that, boom, quick camera, easy. Okay, now that we've gone through all of those, let's get into the editing tips and tricks, which is where all the fun stuff starts. So the first tip is to add a rating or a flag or a star or something. So if you go into edit, see that little arrow on the right, click that, go to rate and review. There's some stars here. You can press one star, two star, three star, four star, five star. You can add a flag or you can remove the flag or unflag it, I guess you could say. Or if you wanna get rid of it, just select the same one that's selected again. This one has five stars. I don't want it to have any stars. Just click the five star, takes it away. This is a really, really good way to go through your images, pick all your good ones, and then sort by that amount of stars because then you have just those images. So let's press one star. Then you go back into the menu, go to segmentation, segment by stars, and then there you find all your one stars. And that's a way to sort through your images and then you can go through all of your one stars and it just makes it that much faster. Now, the one cool thing that the paid version has is what's called adaptive presets. In this day and age of AI editing, adaptive presets is an AI way of editing. So if you're in your edit screen, again, this is for the paid version, you click presets, then you go into, you'll notice it says recommended, it says premium, and it says yours. So here is all your presets. I've created a bunch of presets and I have them available on my website. If you're interested, I'll link them in the description. But if you have the premium version of Lightroom, you click premium, they have all of these adaptive presets. And this simply uses AI technology to find what you wanna edit, and kind of gives you an edit for it. So let's say we wanna adjust the subject. So adaptive subject, let's click that. It's using the, the power of AI, as it says, to find the subject. And then it gives us these options, so pop. So we're gonna click warm pop, okay? And then we click those little that little balance beam. <laughs> Jeez, don't you love the face right before you sneeze? <laughs> it's so bad, like, now you're out, like, out in public and you gotta sneeze and you're just walking around. All right, Miz, and everyone's looking at you like, what is wrong with this guy? Whew, but let me tell you, you lose that sneeze and that's the worst, losing a sneeze. Oh, I hate it. And we're gonna click that little, that bar in the middle, that circle with the bar, and then we're able to adjust how much we want. So this is 100%, we can raise it to 200%, or we could lower it all the way down and kind of notice that the, the subject gets faded. So this is no adjustment, and this is an intense adjustment. Notice how her hair is more bright and vibrant. So we're gonna do that, press check. Good, then let's go into presets again. So then you can go back into adapt the premium presets and you can keep adding whatever you want. And that is just an easy way to add that AI adjustment to make editing that much faster. When you're all done, press the check mark and it brings you back to the editing screen. Okay, the next tip, this is one of my favorites and there was a little bit of confusion in the last video I made on this, so we're gonna clear it up now. And that's how to adjust the, the whites and the blacks to proper dynamic range. So let's click light. And then let's go ahead and reset this because I've already done an edit. So all you have to do is double tap on the actual circle and that'll reset the slider. Now you can adjust the whites and blacks, simply select it and slide it, right? You can adjust it up and down, no problem. But where's the proper point? Now the other thing you could do, and here's kind of a bonus tip, is if you tap on the slider on the right or left of the line, you can adjust it. So here it's adjusting it by plus five and I'm just click, uh, touching on the actual bar of that slider. I want to go the other way, I touch it the other way. That's one way. The other way, and this is my favorite way, push and hold on the slider and you'll notice that the other sliders disappear. Adjust the slider a slight amount and then take your other finger and push on the black part. You'll notice that the screen turns black. Now adjust the slider until you see color. That's where true white is. So right about there and then release both using two fingers, you were touching at the same time, now do it with the black slider. Push and hold the black slider, keep your finger pressed down, take your other finger and push on the black part of the screen. The screen will go white this time, and then you're gonna adjust the blacks until you see blacks on the image. 
And this one, obviously terrible example. There's no blacks on the image because they probably have the tone curl curve adjusted. So we're gonna let that up. Let's go up here to the tone curve and go ahead and adjust that. Yeah, you see how this curve is above that back left corner? Well, that back left corner is true black. So if it's raised above it, there'll never be true blacks in the image. So if we lower that down and press done, if we go back to the black slider, push and hold on the black slider, the, screen, the black box will appear, adjust it, and then press and hold on the black part. See, now there's all those true blacks. So we're gonna raise this all the way back up till we see just a little bit of black, and then there we go. That's our true black point, and that's how to easily do this. And this works on all phones, iPhone, Android, Huawei, any phone you have, if you have this app, it'll work that way. If you're not getting that adjustment, let's say you're, you push on the screen and you see the before and after. So like if I push and hold on the screen, there's the before and there's the after. If you're seeing this, then you're missing a step. So again, the steps are push and hold on the slider, the black box around, the other sliders will disappear and a black box will appear. Use your other finger without lifting the first finger and touch the black box and then move the slider. You'll notice that the screen turns white for the black slider and black for the white slider. Then you can adjust and find your proper white black point. Whew, okay, just wanted to be really clear on that one because there's a lot of confusion and I hope that uh, makes it easy for you. <laughs> All right, the next tip is to set the, the white balance, auto white balance. So we're gonna close the light and we're gonna go to color, and you'll notice white balance on the top. Now, you'll notice that there's an eyedropper tool. If we select that eyedropper tool, then we get a little circle. Now, we can move this circle all around our image, and we're looking for a neutral color, whites, grays, black, something like that. So we're gonna find the waterfall here, and you'll notice that the white balance adjusts. Now, you can set it wherever you want. Set it on the green, and it's gonna adjust to the green, Set it on the rocks, it'll adjust to the rocks. And if you wanna put a style on it, this is a good way to put a creative style on it. But if you want a natural white balance, just find a neutral color. So in this case, we're gonna just set it on the waterfall. And okay, that looks good, nice and warm. And then we'll press the check mark right there. And there is our white balance automatically set. Now you can then go in and adjust the temperature in the tent to how you want it. Let's say I wanted it more blue and a little bit more magenta. Okay, I think that looks better personally, so I'm gonna do that. But if you're just not sure where to start, do the auto set and you're good to go. Now another cool one is adjusting the HSL, the hue, the saturation, and the luminance. Now if you're in the color tab, you'll notice that you could click the black and white button on the top left to make it black and white. If you're familiar with the old Lightroom, the color balance is now the grading. So if you click that, this allows you to adjust the colors in the shadows and the midtones and the highlights, but we're not gonna get into that in this video. We're gonna get into the mix, which is where the HSL is. So click that. Now you'll notice that you have your reds, your oranges, your yellows, your greens, your, your teals, your blues, so on and so forth. Now you can adjust them individually, or you can click this little color mix target button in the center there, and then find the color on the screen that you wanna adjust. Let's say we wanna make her hair brighter. So I'm gonna click First, I'm gonna click luminance in the bottom. So I'm gonna be adjusting the luminance. Click on her hair and then raise up. Now her hair is getting brighter. Now let's say I wanna saturate it more. So I'm just gonna click saturation at the bottom and I'm gonna click her hair and then I'm gonna raise up. I'm gonna raise her saturation. And you'll, let's say I wanna change the hue. I click the hue and you'll notice when I touch, the, the colors that I'm touching are highlighted in the middle there. So if I go down, it adjusts the colors down. If I go up, it adjusts the colors up. So this is a fast way to adjust the colors, all the colors in that, in that area. That way it looks natural and it looks normal and you don't get these weird discolorations because you're adjusting oranges, but there's a lot of yellow there and it causes separation and it looks weird. This is just a really fast and easy way to make that work. And when you're done with that, just click the target again, press done and you're good to go. Okay, so the final tip is the masking features, which used to be the selective edits back in the old Lightroom before they came out with this update. So let's click masking, and what we're gonna do, you'll see the blue circle. We'll click that. It's gonna give us all of these options. Select subject, select sky, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, color range, luminance, etc. Let's just do select subject. We'll click that. It'll detect the subject, and boom. It does a great job. The AI technology that have come out with comes out, it's just, it's just awesome. So now we can do a couple of things. We can, let's just adjust the light. Let's make her brighter. Let's uh, lower her shadows and let's go into color and just raise her saturation. 
I wouldn't do that exactly, but just to show some adjustments. Then press the color again and it closes the menu. Now we have other options. Let's say we want to invert the mask. On the left side, you'll see the invert symbol right above the trash can. This inverts the mask. So now if you look on the right side, if you're familiar with Photoshop, white is where it's being applied and black is where it's not being applied. So that mask that we just created, instead of covering her, is now covering the entire image except her. So let's invert it back so it's just affecting her again. Now, if you notice below the mask, you'll see a plus and a minus sign. This is where you can add or subtract things. So let's say we wanted to mask her, but we didn't want to mask her legs. So first we select subject, then we're going to press the minus, plus and minus button. We're going to say subtract from mask one. We're going to select brush and we're just going to, we can now adjust the brush. So we click 18. This is the size. You can make it larger or smaller. The other one is the feather. So you can make the feather larger and smaller. And the last box is the flow. So you can adjust the intensity of that brush. So we're going to bring the flow all the way up. We're going to make the brush a little bit smaller and the feather less. There we go. Good. And then we're going to subtract her pants. There we go. Good. Now, if we show the mask, we click that little square with the circle in it up the top. Now we see the mask there and we notice we have erased her pants. <laughs> Not really. We've erased the mask on her pants. And so now the mask of the select subject is just affecting her torso and her hair. And there we go. Now, when you're finally done with all of your mask adjustments, make sure you press the check mark in the bottom right. Because if you press the X, It'll say, are you sure you want to discard these changes? Well, if you don't want to save the mask, then press yes, but then press discard. But in this case, we want to press the check mark and save them. And now for the way to intersect the masks, this is really, really cool. So let's say I want to create a linear gradient, uh, um, a graduated filter, if you're familiar with those from the top, but I only want to affect the feet and gradiently fade out on her body. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the mask. We're going to create a new mask, press the plus sign, linear gradient, and we're going to pull it up just like that. Good. Now we're covering the whole image. So what we're going to do is we're going to press subtract, subtract from mask two, press select subject. So now it's going to remove her part of the body out of that, right? So we're going to select that select subject subtraction mask, and we're going to on the left side, click invert. <laughs> How cool is that? Now this linear gradient is only affecting the subject starting thick at her feet and then moving up her torso and fading out. This is the coolest way to add masks. The limits of this masking technique are huge. You can do so many cool things. So just remember that if you want to affect a certain thing and you want to do a certain mask with it, it works great with skies and subjects and all kinds of things. So that is the way to do that. And then press check mark to save it. And that wraps up the quick kind of tour of Lightroom Mobile, some tips and tricks on how to use these different features. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this, uh, this really explained how to do some cool edits in Lightroom Mobile for you. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. I'd love to have you along. Go ahead and hit that like button. Um, but that's it. Anyways, I'll see you guys next week.